Today I woke up and I, I wanted pizza, but I also didn't want to order pizza because I feel like I've been ordering it from the same like two places over the last however many years and um, realized that I should probably make it since that's the thing I do. But I've, I've been having like this weird specific craving ever since Jenna mentioned having some sort of like a baked potato pizza or anything that's different than your regular like, I don't know, tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese pizza. Don't get me wrong, I will eat that until I can no longer eat it anymore for all of my time on this earth. I will do it, test me. But I think there's an opportunity here to get a little bit creative with some new flavors. Just more food that isn't good for you, but put on a pizza. I'm gonna make something that's a little bit crazy today. I'm gonna make a baked potato pizza, okay? And we're actually gonna bake it like a potato. Well, not really, we're gonna bake it. Well. You bake pizzas, so it's just gonna be cooked like a normal pizza. Although I think I'm gonna try to make it in a cast iron skillet because <laughs> Pinterest, here we come, baby. Pinterest, baby, here we come. Coming to Pinterest. I got myself three red potatoes. I got some cheddar cheese. I got some bacon bits and I got some green onions. These are all ingredients that you would just normally prepare for a baked potato, but instead they will go on top of our pizza, which we will be making by hand. Gather yourselves, everybody, and give the delivery guy, give the postman, give him a day off, okay? Listen, guy, all right? You've been working really hard. You've been driving all around town with good smelling food, res restraining yourself from grabbing a handful of those fries. And you know what? Even if you were to have grabbed some fries on the way to my house, I know that's gross and against like a lot of food codes and laws, but I still wouldn't be mad because how could you resist if you do that all day? I mean, it's like your car is just filled with beautiful, wonderful aromas and I don't know. Give them a day off. Let them order a Postmate today and you will be making your own food. That sounded really disciplinary. I'm not mad at you, <laughs> but we're gonna make some pizza today. And the only other pizza I've ever made here is the deep dish pizza, which is a very specific and unique and kind of difficult pizza to make. So this is not that. This is gonna be a much, much more toned down version of Za. There's this restaurant near my house that makes incredible plant-based ranch sauce. So I bought a bottle of it for this recipe. We're not gonna be using tomato sauce. It's only gonna be ranch. It's like a white pie. Without further ado, let's, let's just jump into it. I can say that now, okay? I, Trust me, I can say that now. What's the name of the pizza place that you used to go to? <laughs> okay, so I've been informed that Jenna growing up in upstate New York uh, used to go to a place called Rocky Mountain Pizza Kitchen, which ran into copyright problems. And then her new spot was the Great Northern Pizza Kitchen and both of these pizza kitchens hold sentimental value for Jenna having eaten those pizzas growing up, but also have the exact recipe on their menu, which I don't think they're in business anymore. So let's pour a potato out for the homie, Great Northern. We have our mixing bowl here. We're gonna use some of this gluten-free paleo baking flour. I think it's technically only paleo because there's no just like grain flour in it, but a lot of gluten-free flour is similar to this. so. I'm going to make a pizza dough out of this actually with the recipe on the back. So we're gonna do a cup and a fourth. Actually, T.O., one sec, time out. Gotta preheat the oven. 500 degrees. It's getting hot in here, baby. I'm try to be as precise as possible. We are also going to be adding some Expandex, which is this tapioca, modified tapioca that does well with you know baking because it makes things more stretchy. I'm gonna do about an eighth of a cup of this. I know we're baking technically, but I just don't know, okay? Every single time I have an idea for a recipe, I think I have all the ingredients and then there's usually just like one that's like not here. You're taking roll, you're like, okay, bacon bits, present, okay. Uh, egg replacer, present, okay. Cheese, yeah, we're out here. Regular baking flour that doesn't ruin recipes and is just normal and should be in every household. <sighs> not here. A teaspoon of salt. This is really interesting, the texture here. But we'll see how it turns out. Let's just expect the crust to be bad because then if it's good, we'll just be surprised. What do you think about that? We're gonna do a little quinoa flour as well. <laughs> this is me baking. This is such a bad idea. All right, whatever. 
we've gone down this path now. So, all right, this is no longer paleo because I've added quinoa flour. Also, uh, I feel like I should wash my apron. It's very dirty with flour and other things that I've cooked. Please excuse the dirty apron. All right, this looks about the right consistency. We're gonna pour it in here. And now we're gonna need two tablespoons of water and two tablespoons of olive oil. So we'll do the olive oil first. There's one and there's two. Dos. Oh, I didn't add the baking soda. Fourth a teaspoon, eighth a teaspoon. That's an eighth a teaspoon, confirmed. I think this is a good consistency. It's looking more like dough and it smells kind of like pizza dough actually. But prepare yourself because this is not gonna be the type of beautiful looking stretchy dough that you see on, on the TV, but rather a much more delicate and sensitive dough with feelings. We're gonna take out our Pinterest pan. Whoa, calm down guy. We have our food brush. We're just gonna kind of brush together all this oil on the sides, on the bottom. Just give it a healthy layer of oil so when we cook the bad boy, nothing sticks. All right, let's let, let's let this rest for five minutes and we'll get the potatoes ready. Here we have our mandolin slicer and we are going to slice some very thin pieces of these potatoes for our topping here. I think this is about the thickness you want. It's maybe a little thinner. I feel like this is one of those recipes where you start it and you're like, okay, this is a long recipe. I'll have a lot of steps. I'll have time to think about things. And then you start it and it's just like, oh my God, everything's happening. Or maybe that's just me. I wonder if that's me. Anyway, that's how I feel right now. I'm gonna cut this dough in half. I don't know how to do this. I don't know, I'm not experienced with pizza, okay? Or dough or anything like that. I'm just trying to roll it out into a, a shape that works. This is crazy, dude. I'm like flipping this thing around. I think this crust is actually gonna turn out pretty damn good. I wonder if I need to make this any bigger. This, this like, it's working. It's so satisfying when you make pizza and the dough is like performing like dough and you're not just like angry at it the whole time. It's a shame if this turns out really good, I won't have a recipe for it because I just kind of like an ape threw a bunch of things into a bowl and didn't measure. Who needs a pizza roller when you got these hands, baby? You stay right there, cause you looking good. I think it's time, dude. I, like I said, this recipe just kind of happened really fast. Dude, it's happening so fast. I can't believe I only have like one shot at this. I'm nervous. What do I do with my nerves and my anxiety about this? I want it to be perfect. All right, well, here we go. We're gonna put our pizza in the cast iron. It's looking nice. Oh gosh, I didn't cut up these scallions. I was supposed to prepare these. I was supposed to prepare impromptu cutting session. Scallions are ready. I think step one is, all right, brush with a touch of olive oil. I can do that. I can do that. I'm good with the brush. I'm brushing with olive oil. Now we're gonna sprinkle the ranch. I wanna do this right, so I'm gonna spread it with this ladle that they usually use. That's good. Now we're going to individually place these potatoes that are so thin that I didn't need to cook them hopefully. Then we're gonna take our bacon bits and just kinda, oh, we need to take out the seal first. Everything's fine. And these actually are really great for bacon substitutes because they have the same flavor. So we're gonna have the primary cheese be our cheddar because of the baked potato aesthetic we're going for, but it will not be our only cheese. We will also be adding some Miyoko's mozzarella because this cheese is kind of a legend in the mozzarella department and I think it's kind of perfect for pizza. So I'm gonna break a piece off of this Miyoko's and I'm just going to put little dollops, little baby dollops kind of all over the pizza. Cause no one was ever mad at a pizza that had more than one kind of cheese, except for someone who was lactose intolerant, in which case they probably would have been really mad and sick. Wait a minute. I think I might've done that too early. Don't the green onions go in at the end? Oh no. You're gonna unsprinkle the green onions now. Why am I like this? Okay, I'm gonna leave some of them on cause it's quite literally impossible to take all of them off, but everything's great. Cause we're having a pan pizza soon and 
Well, that's the only reason you need. That's, that means everything's great. Stop asking questions about it. Well, this is it. This is our baked potato pizza before it goes into the oven. I think I'm actually gonna drizzle it with a little more ranch on top, just a little baby. I'm so excited. This is, this is really good looking. Well, 500 degrees, 12 to 15 minutes, and then we're gonna have a nice homemade, homemade baby. Baked potato, pan pizza. I have a good feeling about this one. It's got a nice smell to it right now. I'll tell you that, baby, I'll tell you that. Are you hot enough? How do you tell if the oven's hot? Jenna! I'm sorry, but I'm sitting here just like waiting for the oven to heat up and this is, this feels like a really dope recipe that I accidentally nailed. And I'm definitely speaking too early because it's not cooked yet, but between the crust and the ingredients, the way they've all come together, I'm just like super excited about what I just did. This is a cool thing and I think it's gonna be delicious. And too bad I don't have a recipe for this crust. It's some of this flour, some of that expandex, some of this flour, some baking soda, and some egg replacer. Good luck. I'm gonna write that down, put it on the fridge. Pizza is out of the oven and it looks insanely good. So there's about a 50-50 chance that we have to redo that. I glazed over the cooking the potatoes before putting it on the pizza part, mainly because I don't read instructions and secondarily because I don't read instructions. So when I skipped that part on the recipe, I potentially was skipping a very important part. I started to look up like if it was even possible to cook a raw, even thin slice, but a raw potato on a pizza. And the general consensus is not to do that. So I'm boiling a potato right now. I've made some more dough right here. So uh, I might just really quickly whip up another one. And, but first we're gonna try this one, okay? We're gonna make sure the potatoes are not cooked how we want, whatever. Magic of video editing, you're gonna see like a two second version of it. This is the za. And I think we should just pop it on a little cutting board. What do we say to that? This actually might work, dude. I actually, I don't know if this is, this is bad. This might be good. incredibly hot piece of pizza, a bite. There we go, it's our baked potato pizza. This actually looks delicious. It looks almost cartoon-like with the cheese, the color of the cheese, the green, I don't know. Everything about it just looks really good. I'm gonna take a bite. We'll see how it turned out. Maybe the potatoes worked, maybe they're a little still raw, I don't know. So here's the thing. It tastes so damn good, but the potatoes aren't quite perfectly mushy. They're not like the consistency you would want inside of a baked potato. It's a little more firm than that. The good news about this, oh my God. The good news about this is I made some dough as I panicked while the other pizza cooked because I kind of saw this coming. Well, here we go, round two. It's done. The pizza is finished. Are you ready, Jenna? Yeah! There's, oh my God. We made a cast iron skillet pizza? I think it's about time to actually have this be done. What do you think? It's a little bit janky, but hey, welcome to my kitchen. This is what we do here. I think the potatoes are better on this one. Honestly, if you're asking me, I didn't need to make a second one. Like this, this first one was good enough. 
I just wanted to make one with properly cooked Whoa. potatoes. That looks so good. Do you want to try it? Yeah, really bad. I'm in my pajamas. It's the weekend. Stop judging me. It's going to be pretty hot. It smells like what I remember. Good? Dude, that is so good. You like it? I've only tried the crust. <clears throat> you did a really good job on this crust, huh? I tried. I mean, it's very like thrown together. That's what it would taste like when we would get it in high school. <gasps> oh my God. Mm. Oh, so hot. <laughs> mm. I've made way too many pizzas today. Isn't that so good? It's like, it's a pizza, but the combination you get of flavors with the cheddar and the bacon and the potatoes is like, it really does have that loaded baked potato, loaded baked potato feel. What kind of cheese you put on here? Mainly Dea cheddar mm -hmm. and then Miyoko's mozzarella. Like why does the ranch, when you bake it, like taste like that? It almost tastes like a mix between sour cream and blue cheese, but it's not. It's just It's ranch. really good, yeah. I don't know. This it was, was so ugly, good. but we did it to him. Julian, it's so good. Perfect. It's so naughty and so good. <clears throat> oh. oh! I don't know which one looks the best. What do you think, which one looks the best? Yeah, it's oh this is so good, dude. Until the day that I can magically regain the ability to eat gluten, I think most of my crusts are about like this sad. But honestly, the it's flavor. Not sad, it's good. But the flavor of the pizza like is so good that I don't even care. It's like so good. I don't care at all. Baked potato pizza. Being though like a million percent honest, Julian, we've made way worse pizza crusts than this. Yeah. Way worse. Yeah. This is like actually good. I'm not mad. I don't know at all. Well, I guess there's a lesson today. If you have two favorite foods, combine them, and then that's your new favorite food. You're welcome. I'm a food scientist. Thanks for coming to the lab. I don't know, this one was a lot of work, but it's honestly worth it. It was worth every minute. Like, I've never made a pizza that was like a baked potato. I've never made a pizza with these toppings ever. And I've made like a decent amount of pizzas in my life. This is a first for me, and I will tell you right now, it is not a last. Cause I want to make this all the time. Thanks for watching. I'm really proud of you. Oh God. Really? You're proud of me? Yeah. They're Why? so good. And like... They're all for you. Have as much as you want. Oh my God. Don't say that. <gasps> You're fired. I came here to make a video and eat pizza. And I'm all out of SD card space. See you later.